this isn't like it is on Pretty Women. These girls aren't beautifully dressed, wandering about with their high heels on and their hair up in a bun. These girls are struggling to put clothes on their back. must have happened in a person's life to make them choose to have sex with people that they don't know. Being raped, being beaten, diseases and you know all sorts of health complications. You know what do you think is going on for them? Do you think that this is just a you know a lifestyle choice? You know just lazy can't be bothered getting a job so I'll just go out and do this. Think about those issues. Absolutely there are women involved in prostitution in Dundee um, and you know every night of the week, every day of the year um, unfortunately. What it looks like, well it varies um, from street prostitution so women going to various parts of the city um, in order to um, make money and um, to try and get by or whether it's to feed a habit or, 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 or whatever um, but it's also indoors, it's um, you know through the use of brothels or um, women using their flats or their homes. But I think it also is, um, it can be partners um, who, um, where domestic abuse is a factor, um, who also as part of the control and the abusive behaviour um, force the, their partners into prostitution um, as part of that um, whole power and control. He came as a punter, he came twice for overnights and um, now I'm sort of seeing him. He is wanting me to stop it because he's not working, it's now I'm saying, well, I can't stop it because I've still got a drug habit at the end of the day. And then just just the way we're living, we couldn't be able, we just couldn't do it. If he gets back to work, I think it would be easier as well. Because just now I'm like, well, I'm not stopping this now because we wouldn't have got our chinkies and our pizzas and the life that we've sort of had since he's been there. Again. Do you think those things are worth you going through? It's possible, no, not. We don't believe that women choose to be involved in prostitution if you, if your definition of choice is a choice from a range of meaningful alternatives. If I was kept somewhere in a room with no passport, no benefits, no money, no food, I can't see how I'm making that choice. I think it's really difficult to conceive that a lot of the women um, have any real choice and anything really in their life. It's about getting from day to day. The first time I saw this young girl, I thought, oh, wow, you're far too young to be here. She must have looked about 14. She was older, but she looked 14. And her sister would take her young sister out with her and push her out into the traffic because she was young and the men thought she was young. She looked very, very young and she earned lots and lots of money because she looked so young. She was just so vulnerable and she would come into our drop in and say, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. She didn't feel she had a choice. It wasn't her choice. Her family's choice. She didn't do it. Where could she go? Where would she live? How would she be fed? That was heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. She did manage to stop and moved away from the area. But I've since heard that she is prostituting again, which is just so sad. Anybody who can exploit another human being for money, 
for drugs, for whatever. That is truly shocking. If you can look yourself in the mirror and get up in the morning and know that what you're going to do that day is exploit another human being and make another human being do what they don't want to do, then that's truly shocking to me. Young girls think it's a carry on, oh, you're loving it, Ken, you're doing this because you want to. They've just got different, and that's not the case. <laughs> Ken, what they're paying for, that's not the way, well, <laughs> that's not the way I am. If there was with somebody uh, was wanting to be with, what a day when I'm getting paid for it is far fair. <laughs> To byli mężczyźni, którzy byli w obrączkach, tak? Mm -hmm. To byli żonaci, mężczyźni. Moje takie zdanie jest, że po, po prostu oni się nie nadawają ani na mężów, ani na klientów. Well, prostitution in itself has changed in as much as what we, what we currently have is a uh, a move away from what we would call traditional on-street prostitution towards more off-street prostitution where um, uh, those involved in prostitution are using uh, the social media, they're, they're using text, they're using phones uh, to advertise their services and they're taking um, clients away from meeting them on, on street to arranging meets um, in flats and, and other locations so it's not as visible. Because the problem then moves away from being on street, um, it's more difficult for us to identify those that need services. Also when it moves off street, you, there's a greater element of organised crime being involved because the organised crime gangs can then um, advertise women for sale and they can move women as commodity from place to place um, across Scotland. So what you're then seeing is females being exploited um, and being advertised in Dundee for two days, in Aberdeen for two days, Inverness for a day, and they, they basically work in a route round about Scotland. So we work very closely both um, with local, vice versa, and RASAC, but we also work closely across the country in terms of identifying um, these individuals and trying to put a stop to that kind of crime as well, but that is more problematic. Nie wiem do końca jaka jest prawda, no bo ten mój były szef pisał, że on musi płacić jakimś tam ruskim, ruskim raczej, ale, no, ale się okazało, że przyszedł do mnie rusek i mi zagroził, tak? To nie jest do końca tak, że kobieta, która pracuje jako prostytutka, która ja nigdy w życiu nie pracowałam na ulicy, i nigdy nie prostytuowałam się. To, co ja przeszłam, to jest naprawdę, za, co klient nawet przyszedł i płacił. Ale musiałam to wszystko robić. Pieniądze szczęścia nie dawali. And she was telling me this story about being raped. And that was just horrendous. Not to be listened to when you're saying no must just be horrendous. She could continued with this story. And at the end she said, I'm lucky. I've only been raped five times. How could you be lucky to have only been raped five times? Since she told me that, to this day, she's been raped numerous times again. We need to stop this. We need to stop this. And just as well, this guy can used to phone you every five minutes. It was annoying, but just as well he done it this night. So this one night, I'm standing at my usual place. And then I'm standing at just at the bottom of the closely bit and I hear somebody shouting for you up at the tap window. Are you working? Obviously he can't because he's obviously seen us every night. So I went up and, I was, and he took us into the kitchen where there was just a tea in the kitchen. So as I just got into the kitchen, saw a, 
he just sort of, he just pounced on us straight away, Ken just got us by the throat and was just trying to haul at my jeans. So as I'm, I'm you're sort of letting, sort of letting down, and I just hears my phone and I can it was and I can Ken's where I stand. So I got to my phone and I'm shouting, and where I'm standing, and he must have kept because he could hardly speak because he's got his hands round us, but he was at the same time trying to get a hand off. So I'm going, and while I'm up the stairs with where I stand, and he got that. So as I'm, because I got that out, the guy immediately got off, Ken, and she just stand there every night. Just, he sits close to her, standing at the bottom. Um, Oh, fuck, I was only being a wee bit rough, I went, nah, if you want to be rough, you say that before you start, you didn't just go on to doing that, you didn't do that. Um, and so sort of, when you're in these situations, you need to, you need to go along with it to get out of the house, if you can, what I mean, because you're still in their house. But I remember, now I'm going to see if you can move, and I'm going to eat. Oni żony tego i nie dadzą, no to przyjdą do, do osoby, który, której myślą, że mogą to z, y, zrobić. The kind of drip drip um, effect within the media, within music, um, within films, that women are there to be used as sexual objects is becoming more and more the norm. It's almost like we, we've taken a step back in terms of women's rights and how women are projected because that's the that's the norm and um, this image of the page three the puffed out lips all of that kind of stuff is becoming more and more the norm and what women should aspire to be and um, rather than you know being the, unfortunately rather than being the exception and I think we believe that that's making it easier for um, women to be sexually exploited through prostitution through lap dancing clubs and so on Who's, who is it that's asking them to be in this photograph? Who's behind the camera? It's not a woman behind the camera. 99% of the time it'll be a man. And it'll be a man that's taking control, again, of these women, exploiting them. I've had that sort of a training before, well, these women should just, you know, they should just stop doing it. They should just, you know, we kind of say to people, well, how often do you say, I'm going to stop eating chocolate and I'm going to start exercising and you do it for a week and then you're not very good about it. And that's something that's relatively easy to change. We're relatively, um, you know, confident, well-resourced individuals and we can't make that kind of change in our life. So how do you expect people who have been in very difficult, traumatic circumstances without any of those resources to make the kind of changes in your life and not just one change it's like you know if you want to get out of prostitution you're having to change your address your substance misuse um, you're having to address mental health things you're having to address very difficult issues with your family you know sexual trauma so it's not just one thing it's everything together that's massive it is a lot to do with the drugs and that go in hand I couldn't have done that without the drugs I didn't think no I kind of wouldn't have if I had a phone call, I'd go and have someone straight away before somebody came. Uh, yeah, so I definitely need drugs to do it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. Or have them in your rattle and it's horrible. We're we're not there being judgmental um and, and sort of crusading. We're there to support them in whatever way that we can to improve their lives and ultimately yes, we want to help them to develop roots out. But that's a process. You have to engage their trust, you have to build their confidence. You also have to help them to deal with the day-to-day -day stuff that blocks them from exiting from prostitution. In any society, we should not have women or, or men, anybody, treated as a commodity. Prostitution is treating the victims of prostitution as commodity. We are basically selling people and selling their souls for, uh, for the, the gratification of others. Now, in, in civilised society, in any kind of society, that should not, that should not be something that we um, think is right. We've got to break these taboos about prostitution where prostitution is seen as, oh, well, it's, it's okay, 
the women that are involved in it, they know what they're doing, it's fine. That's not the case. The vast, vast majority of women who are involved in prostitution do not want to be prostitutes. They do not want to have to go out and sell their bodies. They do not want to have sex with men they don't know. They, they want this kind of life that anybody else wants. That's what I mean, I feel fucking guilty now that it did get, I got about ten, half it, more than that lassie's working down there. I remember watching one lassie, she asked us, Ken, so I says I'll phone a punter up, and I says we'd do it too, but I just let her do the punter, but I was in the same room, and I could agree watching her. Because it was fucking horrible. But it was. I was just like she was getting raped. You'd seen it all, it was horrible. But if I am not going to be a good person, I would like to say that I was not going to be a good person. I would like to say that I was until people start realising that, until the customers start realising that these women aren't there because they want to be there, that they're actually using them as commodities, then we're never going to break the cycle. So it's about educating those that are involved and making sure they know the, the, the reasons why they shouldn't be doing this and supporting the women who are involved and the men that are involved to break out of that cycle. At the moment we have a project worker going out into the schools educating young girls and boys about sexualisation of women, how to treat women. And if we could get in these young lads at an early age, hopefully they'll grow into respectful men. Particularly men as well, of challenging other men's views as well around pornography, around prostitution, around lap dancing clubs. They're all on that continuum of sexual exploitation and I think we all need to become more vocal and, and challenging um, these issues and it shouldn't just left to, for women. All women are important, no matter what you do, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a cleaner or whether you're a prostitute, we're all equal and I like to see that everybody's been treated equally and given every opportunity to better themselves and to fulfil all their own ambitions, no matter what they may be. Um, my hope for the future in Dundee is that we, Dundee is seen as a place where there, there is no prostitution, where the sex trade cannot thrive, where the people of Dundee will not accept that uh, people can be exploited um, and that um, they don't see Dundee as a viable market for anything to do with the sex trade. That's my hope for Dundee. There is no one organisation in Scotland or anywhere else in the world that can do this alone that can deal with the effects of the prostitution, deal with the effects that that has on women, um, and alone. We have to work together. Don't forget me This is going on every day in this city Don't forget me going on every day in the city don't forget me this is going on every day in the city so don't forget me I'm still here